Hi there. This is my review of the Browning BLR. This particular BLR is a stainless takedown model and chambered in 308. There's quite a wide variety of chamberings offered in the BLR, which makes it somewhat unique for a lever action rifle. I think this year there's something like 15 of them, ranging from 223 all the way up to 450 Marlin. And it includes a bunch, you know, a small handful of the, the magnums, uh, long and short magnums. It's quite interesting. Uh, go, go check out the Browning site if you want to see what the differences are. Other differences offered are, are of course, there's, there's also non-takedown. Uh, the, the BLR is, comes in both. Uh, stainless or blued, laminate or walnut, and the straight grip or pistol grip. This obviously is a, the straight gripped stainless laminate. Personally, I, th I find the, the blued pistol grip walnut to be extremely attractive. That being said, I'm, I'm quite happy with this particular rifle. I really am a fan of the stainless in, in my environment. I live on a boat in a, a saltwater environment. And, well, I'm... I'm you know, people think that, oh, because it's stainless, you don't need to do anything. Uh, it's, you know, we know that to be not true. You need to still look after your rifle, keep it oiled, keep an eye on it, so on and so forth. But it gives you a bit of leeway. Not the worst thing in the world. That being said, I, I do really, if, if I lived on the land, I would have really leaned towards getting the, the blued and walnut versions. I think they just look smashing. Anyway, uh, I'll go through the pros and cons of this rifle. Uh, I'll start off with the pros. The first pro is it's it's relatively light. You, of course, you can find much lighter. I believe there's bolt action hunting rifles that even go below five pounds, but most of them are in around the five pounds ish area or whatever. Uh, it really depends on how much money you want to spend, I guess. But there there are quite light bolt actions. That being said, this isn't too bad. Uh, the, the 308 is 6 pounds 8 ounces. Uh, I think that the, some of the magnums and such will move up into the 7 pounds 12 ounces. Like the, the 300 Win Mag are up in that range. And the short magnums I think are in the 6 pounds 12 ounces. So they're a little bit heavier than this, but really not by much. Uh, where, I, where I add weight is the scope, of course. Cheap scope, but functional. Quite accurate, as, uh, as you'll see in a minute. Uh, another big pro to this rifle, and not all BLRs take down, but I think that's a, a huge benefit, and that's the whole reason I kind of went headed towards the BLR, is I wanted a, a takedown in a heavier caliber than than my uh, Ruger 1022 takedown, and 308 was just, you know what, it's a perfect match for it. Anyway, the takedown is really simple. It's just a lever under here. Pull it out, and then kind of wiggle it back and forth, and gently pull it out as you're wiggling. Give it a turn to clear the scope bell, and there you go, it's in two halves. The 308, this has a 20 inch barrel, and it matches the length of the stock in action perfectly. Of course, in the heavier calibers, you'll get either a 22 or on some of the big magnums, the 24 inch barrel. And likewise, I think the barrel is going to be significantly more meaty on the magnums. Makes sense. Thing to be careful of is when you're pulling it apart, watch out that you don't scrape up your scope bell with the rear sight. This, this is a nice rifle and it's it's actually is quite accurate. So the rifle does merit a, a good optic on it. So it's, it's not out of sight to, for somebody to put a really nice expensive optic on it. And what I would say to you guys is be either be really careful, put something over your scope belt, so just in case you do slip you don't gouge it up, or remove the, the rear sight entirely. It, up to you how you react to it, but I just don't want to see somebody, you know, first time they pull the rifle apart, scratch up their scope bell, being clumsy and being upset about it. Put it together really simple. It's, you know, and you know what? It holds zero. I've got the scope mounted on the receiver. The rifle is tapped for the, the barrel mounted scout style scope. I don't have the mount for it, but I believe they come with the rifle. 
Maybe not, I don't know, but they are available anyway. So if you do want that kind of variant, it, you can do that. That being said, as you will see from the accuracy, if I was having a problem between takedown and putting it back together in the point of impact changing, I would have noticed. Uh, I didn't do it too much. I only did it two or three times, and it, re it didn't. I didn't notice any difference at all. So, uh, and uh, you know what? I didn't spend a lot of time uh, tuning up my scope between various types of ammo. So you, you'll you'll see from my targets where point of impact was anyway. I might have been playing around with it a little bit. So I did, I really wasn't concerned with that when I was playing around with the accuracy. Uh, another another big positive, here we go taking it apart again, you guys get to watch this again. Uh, a big positive is the way the bolt locks up to the barrel. And a lot of you guys are going to look at that and see that it's very AR like and it is. See the, the locking lugs in here, just ahead of the barrel. And the bolt likewise has a floating bolt head that when it's closed turns and locks into those lugs. This is particularly ingenious for this rifle because it most of the stress from firing the rifle is confined to the this barrel assembly and the floating bolt head and very little of it is going to be transmitted back into the receiver assembly. So the fact that the receiver is milled aluminum which this is. Everything else is steel. Stainless steel, whatever. But the receiver is milled aluminum with a, a pretty durable coating on it. And there's, I have no problem with that whatsoever. Particularly because of the bolt design. That really, it's just the, the support of the rifle that it's, the stress it's under. And as such, the action is really smooth. You really got to try this thing out. There's a certain amount of uh, spring assist to it. If, if you're looking for a hunting rifle that you can do nice quick follow-up shots while still at the shoulder, this is this is this is it. And this is maybe why Browning did all put all this effort into a lever action rifle is because it, it's designed to do that. I'm not a hunter really. Uh, I've I've hunted very little in my lifetime, and if I what little I have has been small game. So I'm really not somebody to ask too much about it so I'm guessing if anybody has any commentary on that please do leave them below uh, give an idiot some en enlightenment on this regard but that that would be my impression is why they did this with a, a lever action just to satisfy that that and it looks nice <laughs> who really knows anyway uh, another big positive for the rifle is it comes with half decent iron sights uh, fully adjustable simple but Entirely functional. Hope the camera's getting these all right. Windage and elevation adjustable. And then the front sight. I'm not sure that's showing up from here. Get an idea what the sight picture might be like. I think you're going to just have to use your imagination. There's the actual front sight. Get an idea what the muzzle looks like. Pretty standard but nice steel sights. My intention is once I'm done satisfying my curiosity playing with various types of ammo and quite probably a few hand loads, I will remove the scope. I, I really feel the, the strength of this rifle is it's it's compact, it, it's it's light, and the scope really detracts from that. That being said, I'm not a really accurate shooter with a with a scope. I'm hunting accurate. But when you see the accuracy of this rifle, having a scope on it is really going to give me the, the determination as to just how good every type of ammo is. First type of ammo that I'm going to show you is very common here in Canada and kind of inexpensive hunting ammo. You can find this stuff pretty much, you, you walk into a, a backwoods gun store or, or shop selling ammo you're going to see this federal blue box on the shelf. Either 180 grain or 150 grain. The first targets are the 180 grain. I'm going to show you. The rifle really liked it. 
My only cautionary is don't damage the lead tips. I see this stuff all the time where people will give you their extra ammo that they don't have a rifle for and you'll get it, it'll be this stuff and the, the lead tips will just be creamed. They'll just be beat the heck. And the lead doesn't so much deform as just chip off in chunks. And that really has a negative effect on accuracy. So I strongly recommend you leave your ammo in these plastic holders and run them right from the plastic holder into your magazine and out the rifle kind of like they should be. Don't store this stuff loose on a, a, a stock shell holder unless you're really careful or a cookie tin or the, the console of your pickup truck or bush buggy. Don't do that. <laughs> that being said, there's a, a three shot group. This is one of my better three shot groups. I shot four and a half boxes and three of those boxes were shot so 60 rounds doing three shot groups just to check for consistency. This is one of my better groups. I think I might have had one or two better but it, it started to rain on me and by the time I got the targets down they were just sopping so I didn't keep them. But they were, they were generally about this. I think one was 0.7 or something like that. You get the idea. Quite accurate for a three shot group at uh, 100 meters. It's actually turned out to be about 105 when I threw the range finder, but good standard range for hunting. Here's one of my, the worst groups. Yeah, no kidding, not bad, eh? Considering I could put five of these, or sorry, eight of these in here and that they would fit in between these. That talk about consistent with inexpensive hunting ammo. I mean, what more can you ask out of a rifle? And I can't tell you how pleased I was by this. One of my first three shot groups was obviously in this mid group. And I shot the three shot group and I could see it through my scope that it was pretty darn tight. And I was like, wow, you know, what a nice, <laughs> what, a, what a lucky three shot group is kind of what was going through my head. You know, kind of, oh, could you imagine what it'd be like if this rifle kept doing it? You know what, it did. And, you know, nothing wins me over to a firearm is when it's effective, particularly with cheap ammo. There you go. You know, a lot of people are going to look at this and go, I really don't need to know much more else. And you know what, really? Uh, <laughs> this almost sells the rifle right there. Go buy yours today. Uh, <laughs> here's, here's all I have to say. This is what happens when you damage lead tips on that particular ammo. Don't do it. Be careful with it. it uh, the, I did these on purpose just to show it. I was pretty brutal to it, but as you can see the groups open up. So if, if your experience with this ammo or what you hear about it is, is it isn't that accurate and this is the accuracy, you may want to try it again just and you know right out of the box and make sure what you've heard or the ammo you got wasn't just stuff that's been beat the hell out of. Buy it off the shelf and give it a try out of your rifle. You know, some rifles aren't going to aren't gonna like various types of ammo, and that is just what it is. They're, they're individual that way. This is with the same type of ammo, but in the 150 grain. The rifle doesn't like it nearly as much, but it's still very functional ammo. I'll show you what it looks like. The lead tip is much more exposed. I should point out I actually I had no no problems with the rifle as in feeding or ejecting or anything like that of course. There's the 150 grain, one of the better groups. I didn't shoot too much of this, but it, it was it was there's a four shot group. It opened up a bit. I was kind of hasty with it or whatever. Really didn't make a huge difference. And there might have been a couple in between here, but they were I mean, that, 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 that was kind of what I was expecting out of the rifle, to be honest, was this kind of accuracy off, off the shelf ammo. And as such, I would have been happy with that. I mean, you can, you know, I think, I think I read something off Chuck Hawks that his recommendation for hunting, which made kind of sense to me, was 100% of your shots have to be in a six inch area. If you can achieve that with your rifle ammo at a, the given range you're going to take your shot at, or shots, um, you should be good to go. As I say, I'm not a hunter. 
as far as I'm concerned, three shots should be getting what you need to be done, uh, looked after kind of thing. I, I'm, I honestly wouldn't want to have to shoot something twice. I think it should be dead in one shot. Otherwise, you're, you may not be getting your animal. Again, I'm not a big hunter. It's the, I think the largest thing I've ever shot was varmint, so that I don't really count. These are all just me blathering an opinion that really doesn't matter, I guess. Again, here's what happens if you damage those lead tips. Be careful, don't do it. The rifle didn't care really all that much for this stuff. I've had a, a few box of this, boxes of this kicking around, and I've yet to hit a rifle that likes it. Again, I'm not going to judge the, say, oh, this ammo's crap. It, I'm sure it's not. It's just a matter of some rifles don't like it. And I can say the Remington 700, chambered in 308, and the Browning BLR in 308 don't like it. Here's what it looks like. Could very well be that it, it stabilizes at longer ranges and is more accurate in, let's say, a Savage 308, which I don't have. I, I would love to hear. If anybody has a different experience with this particular type of ammo, please do do make a comment and let us know which, which rifles like it. But I've had, I've, I've had two Remington 700s and now this rifle that have tried it and didn't like it. I'm sure somebody's rifle likes it. They're charging two bucks. Per, per round. You know, box is basically 40 bucks. People are paying it. There's got to be a reason for it. Maybe I'm missing something for for the hunters to know something about its its ability to knock stuff down. Maybe it has something to do with it. It is hunting accurate. But at two bucks a shot, I want more. Personally, I'm old school enough that if if I were to to go for deer, I'd be looking for the 180 grain saw point federal blue box. It's, you know, guys were using this in 30 out six on moose and so on and so forth all through my youth. So it, it, it did them just fine. It'll, it works now. Here is this stuff, which isn't made anymore for a bit of shame. This is the Nosler ballistic white tip. I believe it's 150 grain. The whole purpose of this stuff was controlled expansion, yet not not over penetrate. Kind of a balance between the two. And obviously, in 308, that's not really a need. I think you mostly see this on the shelves for uh, 270, 30 out six, probably in the Magnum, so on and so forth. But they've discontinued it in the 308. Probably the 308 just doesn't have enough power to really make all those necessary. So they've discontinued it for the, the whole point of it being kind of moot. That being said, if you can find it and you want to hand load a, a hunting round, not a bad idea because it, it certainly shows promise. It seemed to be relatively accurate. I didn't have a ton of it, so I didn't shoot too much of it. But it was all, all right in around a you know 1.5 MOA. Actually, I'm at a, what was it, 105 meters, so I'm not sure what that is in yards, like 115 yards, so I'm actually below 1.5 MOA with this stuff. This is me just shooting, standing up off the shoulder, three shots, just giving it a try, seeing what I can do with it. It's more of a, a statement of my inability than ability, really, but I don't know. I, I'm happy with <laughs> off the shoulder, four shot, four inch group, I should say, three shots. I'm I'm okay with that, I guess. A lot of you are probably saying, you know what, stick to target shooting. I think I'll do that. Anyway, uh, as I said, this is this stuff. Mostly sub MOA, three shot groups, cheap off the shelf hunting ammo. What more can you ask, really? Uh, I really don't have anything more to say on the accuracy of the rifle other than it looks absolutely smashing. And I will probably hand load for this rifle. I'll have a hard time trying to resist not doing it. So I, I'm probably going to experiment a little bit. If I don't post anything in six months, 
you'll know I've not done better than this ammo. You know, basically if I get, you know, three shot .75 groups with my hand loads, why on earth would I bother continue if I can just buy this cheap stuff off the shelf? And I like having federal brass for my hand loads for my Remington 700 police. Oh yeah, I should probably mention, this chamber is quite tight on this rifle. I was expecting, due to the fact it's a hunting rifle, the chamber would be much looser and I would be able to run my my neck-sized hand loads for my Remington 700 police through it. Not so. The chamber's actually quite a bit tighter. And I mean significantly tighter. I didn't, I didn't even try and cycle it. I just gently kind of set it in there and the rounds literally bound with the brass still sticking out. Obviously the, the case dimension is way different on, on those fired out of the Remington 700 police. I went on the Browning site and they brag that they hand lap the chambers so they're very tight and likewise the head spacing is very tight on the bolt lockup. I believe them. I think hand loading for this, this rifle is going to be specifically the brass fired from this rifle. You're not going to find another rifle with the chamber nearly as tight. It, very unlikely either. I And I suspect the, the Savages are all going to be way looser than this too. So if you are going to hand load, they're going to need to be once fired from this particular rifle. Wicked tight chamber. And that's probably why it's so accurate. Not really a big negative, but I thought I'd mention it. The most significant negative I can find to this rifle is the trigger. It's not a bad trigger. It's not gritty. It's not hugely a long pull or anything like that. It's kind of a two-stage trigger, but really what makes it different is the way it works. You'll notice the pivot point for the trigger is right here, and where you actually pull the trigger is back here, which means when you're pulling it, it kind of goes up. Most trigger designs usually have a pivot point up in, would be right in here. This one's back here, so it gives it an odd kind of feel, almost like you're, you're instinct is to pull it up like that and of course with a straight stock you can you do kind of instinctively do that you don't pull straight back this way you're pulling up like that but it is an odd feel and if you are trigger sensitive you're going to want to try this out and make sure you don't hate it that being said if you're somebody that generally can handle uh, the average rifle with a bit of practice you'll be fine it isn't dreadful it's not like it's a um, Bozum Nagant or an SKS or anything anything crazy like that like these these World War II battle rifles it, it's not that bad uh, it's just not what you would expect out of a fairly expensive hunting rifle so try that out if you're if you're cautious the next negative and not a huge negative would be the complexity of the action Browning recommends that the end user not take apart this action. And I'm the first person to kind of poo-poo these things and go, oh no, I'm gonna give it a try. And I usually, you know, I, I've never not succeeded getting something back together. And, you know, I I don't, none of, nothing I own has stripped screw heads and stuff like that. I use the right tools. I took one look at this and went, no, I'm not, I'm not gonna take this apart. There's, you know, there's a, a reduction gear in along with this gear, with how this this operates. There's there's a, a, a certain level of spring assist in here, and it's just it's just something that's going to spit out a bunch of small gears and springs if I start taking it apart. So I'm going to concur with what Browning says and not take it apart. Honestly, for cleaning, you don't need to. You, you can you can cycle it and spray in ballast all and get in there with a, a Q-tip or, or an oily paintbrush and brush any grit or anything out of there without too much difficulty. You do have good access in there to the bolt all in here. Likewise the bolt head you'd have to give it a good spray to get in around back behind it or whatever. Again nothing nothing like a, a good fine gun oil to, to do that work for you. With the takedowns, 
you can access the, the bolt head pretty easily. With the non-takedowns, you're going to have to do it from the, the open port here. Likewise, with a takedown, very easy to access these lugs. In the non-takedown version, your experience is going to be similar to anybody who owns an AR. It's going to be a little more difficult to access that. Probably your best way to do it would be through the through the the magazine port here. Get it up through there, then there. Likewise, a, a boar snake is probably a, a really good way of dealing with this rifle for your most common cleaning. Not a huge negative, but I certainly is worthy of mention, I think. The next negative, which isn't really a negative for a hunting rifle, but should be noted is the magazine capacities. For all the chamberings from 223 all the way up to 30 6 magazine capacity is four rounds and then of course you can top it off have one in the chamber pop your magazine out top it off so you'll have four in the magazine one in the chamber and likewise for the the magnums they're they're knocked down to three rounds in the magazine including the 450 marlin there's quite a large case on those twos. Um, there, there are three rounds in the magazine, one in the chamber. You can, this is a, a four rounds sitting in the mag. I'll close the bolt. Magazine goes in with a nice solid click to pull it out. That's it. It'll fall right out. It, it's, it's quite a nice design. Very solid. Doesn't rattle around in there at all doesn't shake or anything like that. It, it'd be a nice quiet quiet affair. That being said, I wouldn't suggest having spares of these. The whole point of having a, a spare mag in your pocket with rounds in it, first of all, when, when you pop rounds out, more often than not, I've had an occasion where it just literally dumped the whole mag out all in one shot. And it wouldn't take much for the tip of the, the bullet to get caught in your pocket as you're pulling it out and kick it out. And it could very well dump the whole magazine onto the ground for you. Not, not really, it's not really designed for it. It, it. it feeds very smooth, no failures to feed or anything like that because of the magazine. But they're not in there very solidly. And likewise, they're not exactly, they're not exactly covered at the front. So it'd be quite easy for stuff to get caught on them. It's not like a, an AR mag where you can have your pocket stuffed with them and the rounds are very secure in the mag. Not so for this one. And the magazines are expensive. Here in Canada, this thing's basically a $100 bill. Not worth it having spares as far as I'm concerned. If I had a spare, and you know, I did, you know if, I was, if I had extra cash or whatever and was at the... the the local gun store and I saw one of these magazines kicking around. I may pick up a, a, a second just just in case and keep it handy. Uh, just it, it doesn't hurt having spare parts sort of thing but I, I wouldn't feel the need to carry one around with me loaded with ammo. No point really. Really the, the, the whole point of making this is I don't think there's larger capacity magazines for this rifle. It's a hunting rifle uh, you're probably not going to find 10 round or 20 or 30 round mags for it. You're going to find this. The last negative, not a huge deal, more of a preference thing, but I'm not a fan of it, is this high gloss finish that Browning uses on the laminate. They use it on the walnut too. It absolutely looks great on the walnut. Again, this is just my opinion and it's probably not really worth anything but I'm not a huge fan of the super high gloss finish on it. It marks up kind of easily and eventually I'm probably going to strip it right down and just just put on a spray on matte polyurethane or something and call it good. I believe I can get the wood off fairly easily to do so so I probably will and you know I did buy the gun used and it had it had some bush marks on the rifle in various spots and I can, I can basically, if I take off this coating, that would fix that entirely. It'll look like a brand new rifle when I'm done. I like refinishing wood. I actually prefer oil finished woods generally on guns, but personal preference.
general comments, I just find the whole rifle kind of interesting that Browning did it. All this work and offered all these calibers in a takedown and made it a lever action. Kind of interesting. I'm not sure why they did it. Again, I'm not, not much of a hunter, so if anybody has some wisdom to offer me, please do. I just think it's kind of neat. I like it. It's nifty. Very useful. Competition. I really don't... Just because of the fact, lever action, wide variety of, of chamberings, including stuff like 300 Wind Mag and 450 Marlin. 223, I mean, it, it's very unique that way. Uh, it's available in takedown. And it's a lever action. It's just there is no competition for it. There is competition for takedown rifles, but again, you're going to probably be looking at a couple grand at least. I think HS Precision and you know maybe some uh, gunsmiths offer the the service in converting your hunting rifles into takedown. You're probably going to be looking north of of two grand here in Canada to have something like that happen. These models here are about thirteen hundred bucks. You can pick them up used for less than a grand if you're careful. How can you go wrong with something like that? It's no competition, basically. In conclusion, I would have to say I, I'm very, very pleased with the rifle. Uh, most importantly, it's accurate. It's compact. It's relatively lightweight. I get the scope off of it. It's, it's actually quite lightweight. Uh, it's very, very useful. And I think it's earned a spot next to my Ruger 1022 takedown as as it's now the second rifle that I will just never get rid of. It's just too useful. I hate to say it, but I would probably get rid of my Remington 700 Police, which I absolutely love. Uh, super accurate rifle. But the fact of the matter is it's it's grotesquely heavy and it's it's long and unwieldy. And in a practical situation where I, I really got to think, okay, I, I can only own one 308, this is going to be it. Hope you enjoyed the video. Uh, if you have any comments or concerns, please do post them. I'm usually pretty quick in responding to them. If I'm not being quick, I'm probably on a trip and out of, out of a cell phone or any kind of electronic range. And when I get back, I will, I will respond to you. Hope you enjoy the video and have yourself a good day.